Hello and welcome back to my Fixing It channel. I've uh, I've got something rather special on the bench today. This is a silver label Commodore 64. Beautiful low number, but strange boot up sound untested. Okay, so let's get straight into this and I'm just gonna, I've got it connected up to capture. I'm just gonna take my diagnostic card out. I've already had a little, little look and this did appear previously on a triage episode uh, a little while ago and it's it's just been waiting for its turn on the bench so here we go this is what happens when i turn this on so <laughs> there's something missing there we've got well we've got a flashing cursor so cia is good but we've just got ready and no commodore international and bytes free displayed so that's that's what's going on there let's take this off and it is in lovely condition if i just quickly show you the back of the board the back of the case Serial number on this is 0882. Made in West Germany. This is a very, very early Commodore 64. Assay number 326298. And we've got date codes on the chips. Um, this is not the original SID. This is um, my SID. I've got the original SID set to one side uh, for safekeeping. Um, but the this is the original... PLA, which is 8235, and the original CPU, which is 1982. Everything in here has got 1982, middle of 1982, 44th week of 1982, so later in 1982. Um, that, that says 2270. I don't believe that one. <laughs> 40th week 82, 40th week 82, so, oh, and 4382. So we're around... The, the last quarter of 1982. It's in marvellous condition. All of the, there's a little bit of tarnishing on the gold fingers here, and a little bit of war, wear on these ones, but apart from that, everything is in perfect condition. The heatsink for the fire, yeah, the five volt regulator, I'm pretty sure that is, has um, got some thermal compound on it and has been stuck to the cartridge casing here but that's flopping away so I might need to I don't know if this was mine I would drill a hole through there and maybe tap um, in the similar way as this is tapped here for the um, RF shield tap a hole in there to just put a small screw in to hold that in place so that's what we get on the display right now is just that ready prompt so what do we get with diagnostics so normal diagnostics that's the no RAM check version, actually. Let's, let's switch that to the full normal diagnostics. It actually runs, and it always has this same pattern. I wonder if that's repeatable. Well, I've just noticed something. Um, right here, next to this resistor on R5, there's a crater there and it looks like a broken trace. So my earlier assessment of this being in excellent condition is a little bit out. One other thing I wanted to show you was that this doesn't heat up in any meaningful fashion. The, um, the, all of the chips um, look good. There's two RAM chips down here that look like they're hotter than the rest but they are different types so I would I would expect those to be a little bit different uh, there's a 7406 here that's a bit warmer than I would like so maybe that's a suspect but all of the uh, logic over here is not moss so I would expect this to be okay the only things that I worry about are the ROM chips uh, possibly being bad and that's something I'll, I'll have to look at later. The CIAs seem to be uh, a good temperature. The CPU is good, and I know I've tested that in another board, and I've tested the PLA in another board, and I've tested this ROM in another board. But these ones that are soldered to the board, not so sure. But this, I wasn't aware that that, that was broken. I wonder if I can, before I go any further, just have a little prod to see if there's any continuity there. Oh, that is broken. 
if that's the way that's supposed to go, I'm going to have to look up. Yeah, that might not be. I'm going to, have to well, let's get the microscope on this and have a look. I'm going to take it out of the case first and, um, and then put it under the microscope and have a good look around the whole thing. Uh, oh, for those that are curious, Des Test does this. Just shows me that same bit two is um, bad. But um, Dead Test actually passes the memory. I'll quickly show you that as well. So we get no flash and it's just waiting. It's going through its memory or oh, the first 4K memory test. And then does that. So it's, I mean, it's not a pass, <laughs> but it's not agreeing with te Des test. So I, th I don't trust either result at the moment. The first thing I want to do is have a quick look on the back of the board, see if there's anything. Ah. Okay, so right, right here is where that broken, or well, that crater was. So this is a factory bodge. So this might not be our smoking gun. Here we are, I've got it out of the case and I've had a good look around it and I've inspected this bit. Let's have a look at the uh, microscope and under the microscope and see this bit that I was a bit concerned about. And what I think has happened here is this is a factory bodge. And I think that they've cut the trace there. I'm not sure why there's solder on the end of it there. But the, on the other side of, well, that, that trace there used to run across here. And on the other side of here is a resistor that goes from here up to somewhere over here, somewhere around here. I can quickly show you that. Here's the resistor on this side and on the other side we have this resistor here and that's connecting, you know, this end is sharing, sharing the same hole and it's off on this end down to I think this point here, that point there. So I'm pretty sure it's a factory bodge and I'm sure and I'm sure that that is actually that that is exactly as it's supposed to be. So a uh, couple of things that I observed the the uh, multiplexer chips here these 257s are not the nicest looking. So if I show you this these under the microscope as well. So that's that's a healthyish looking logic chip next to the multiplexers and you can see that for instance, here, this, this is nice and shiny, a little bit corroded, but not too bad. But if you look over here, look at these. That's, there's like a black, horrible crust on all of these. And then where you can see there's um, bits of the crust missing is where I've been using my um, oscilloscope to probe all of these. But all of these are black. Now, I think that this is indicating that these are chips that could go bad because this corrosion can work its way inside. And it's the same with, oh, that's that one. There's one below it here, exactly the same thing. Horrible crustiness. I suspected those first. And what I did was I took the oscilloscope and I probed all of the lines on both of those chips and compared them to a known good board and they all look good. Uh, I also went through all of the data lines and the address lines on the CPU and all of the other lines like uh, the ready line, the IRQ line, AEC, reset, clock, read, write, all of those. I've checked them and they all look good. So, And I know it's not the CPU and so it's, it's going to be something else. Again, I'm, 
I'm leaning towards the ROMs. So the <laughs> I checked all of the ROMs with the scope and I still I can't find anything that looks that looks too terrible. The the only thing that is bothering me is that basic didn't come up. Uh, we had the kernel was there um, and I think that's the character ROM, that's the kernel ROM and that's the basic ROM and the kernel seemed to be working because the machine was running but as soon as you try to do anything in basic it crashes and I can show you that if I connect a keyboard up to this so if I do 10 print <laughs> Oh, zero print. Oh, that's not. Yeah, as soon as I press return to enter anything into into memory, it um, it crashes. I'll turn that off and on again. So at this point, I think that the computer is working. CIA is working because keyboard input is working, or well, one of them is. But ten. Print. Hello. World. Return and it dies. So all of that makes me feel that the best chance I've got of um, stumbling across the problem with this is going to be the basic ROM. I'm going to take the basic ROM out, I'm going to socket it and then we'll, uh, we'll test it in another machine. And it's not like there isn't already a, a ROM socketed in here. Okay, that was a very clean pull. I'll just have a quick look over this with the, the scope. No, no damage traces on that side. And no damage on that side. Right, verify first, make sure everything's working. Working. Oh, it's got hooked, hooked legs. All right, let's try that. Ha <laughs> ha. Well, okay, so I'm a little bit of a loss on this one because at least for my initial inspection of everything that's gone on, with this machine. I can't see anything obvious and I don't have the in-depth knowledge of someone like uh, an Adrian from his digital basement to diagnose this from the symptoms that are present as they are presented. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop the video now and I'm going to ask for your input and if you can let me know in the comments or let me know uh, via Discord or even email, then if you've got a really good idea of what the problem might be, then we'll try and use the power of the crowd to diagnose and fix this very precious machine. Not this very precious machine. This, Well, this is very precious to me. This is my Commodore 64 stunt machine, but it's uh, not the broken one. 
but the one that's broken. Let's, let's fix that together. I don't want to start just yanking chips out without a plan. I, I had a reasonable suspicion to pull this one. Uh, so I feel justified in taking this one out. But at this point, I'm not any of the, uh, I'm not any closer to a diagnosis and I haven't got any more particularly good clues of what might be wrong. So I'm gonna put a socket in here, put this ROM chip back in. And then I think I'm gonna hand it over to you guys. What do you think it is? Can you help me? I will, before I edit this video, I will double check all of the chips that are socketed in a working machine. So I'll, I'll, the, the SID is I, uh, my SID, but the PLA, the CPU and that ROM and the VIC-2, I will double check. I will clean the sockets. So all of that's done. Something else I did off, off camera was check all of the caps with an ESR meter like this one. And all of them are pretty much within spec. There's a couple here that have got only a couple of ohms of resistance. Everything else is really in very good condition. Voltages are all good. What else could it be? I've checked the clock. I've checked the reset. There isn't anything else that I've oh, just noticed. This uh, resistor array here, look at that. <laughs> anyway, yes. Yeah. Um, so help me. You're my only hope. Good luck.